Hey everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. And in this episode we are going to talk about the Ender 2 machine, the machine that's printing right behind me. And just for a full disclosure, I bought this machine. I didn't get it for free, although I got it from the money that I earned uh, via the affiliate links of GearBest. So this is money that I earned because you guys, my great YouTube followers, you bought some machines via the links in the description down below. And well, with that money, I was able to get this machine that I'm going to review for you guys now. So what do I think about this printer? So the printer you see here, this is my Ender 2 machine. And on this machine there is the on off button, then there is the selector, which is turnable and pushable. And here, you can't see it right now, but over here there is a, a simple micro SD card slot and also a USB uh, connection where you can plug in your computer so you can uh, work with this machine from the computer. Now the build size of this printer is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters and it has a height of 200 uh, millimeters, so 20 centimeters. And this is really a, a large build place for such a small printer because it has a very small footprint. Now there is also a downside to this printer and that is that uh, here you can turn the machine on and uh, basically even if the machine is turned off you will hear its fan working because on the back of the printer over here I've got the power supply unit and the power supply is always powered if you have the plug inserted into your wall so when the power is on this uh, unit on this power supply unit then you will hear it always and there is no knob where you can turn it on or off. So when you turn it on, this is the second uh, power fan that goes on. So then you not only hear the cooling fan of the power supply unit, but also the cooling fan of this unit. So this is my, my complaint about this machine. But hey, this is all the complaints I have, because basically this is a very, very good printer with a very large build space for such a small printer. And the fun thing is, if you take a look at the top of the machine, then you can see that the spool holder is here on the top. So it's really a very nice machine to have in your workspace. Now, this part, what you see here, is almost completely made on this printer. Uh, I have one part that is made on my uh, JG Aurora A5 printer, but basically this thing is made on this printer. And well, as you can see, it spits out M&Ms. So yeah, th this is completely built on this printer. But I also printed some flexible on this printer. And well, this printer can handle flexible without any problem. Now another thing I printed on this printer is this pretty large face. And as I said, you can print 20 centimeters high on this machine. Now let's take a look underneath the Ender machine. There you have three thumb screws. And those three thumb screws, they are there for leveling the bed. So it's this thumb screw over here, this thumb screw, and this one. And the large grey screws you see, here and here, I printed myself. I could find them on Thingiverse and they make leveling just a little bit easier than it is. Now notice that this bed is traveling alongside this extrusion, which is a 2040 extrusion. And uh, on this extrusion your bed is traveling and it has three wheels uh, of which two are on this side and one is on the other side. Now the wheel on the other side, that's a solo wheel, that wheel has a concentric nut so you can, uh, you can grab 
the, the uh, machine and, and make it tight. Make sure that the bed won't uh, wobble on its rails. Now for the z-axis this whole thing moves up and down just controlled by one lead screw that's on the back of this machine. So uh, this one lead screw takes down this whole column on which you can find this axis and also your extruder. The print bed of the Ender is a heated print bed and with the material you get with it uh, you can just print on it but I found out that sometimes the print doesn't stick very well and then you just use some uh, glue stick and then it works very very nice and uh, you receive a glue stick with this printer so uh, you not only get the bed you also get the glue stick now another thing I changed on this printer is this wheel that you see here this is the wheel that controls the uh, extruder and normally you can just see your extruder working but now it's more visual uh, what it does so you see the whole thing moving around when uh, filament is being extruded but also when the motors are not uh, powered you can use it by hand to just push some filament through the nozzle now compared to some other small printers uh, this is the fabricator mini that has only got a 10 by 10 by 10 build space uh, then here we got the GTEC E180 and this build space is 13 by 13 by 13 centimeters and then you got the Ender and the Ender takes a smaller footprint than uh, the other printers or, or maybe just as small as, as the Fabricator 2 uh, but it's a very very small footprint but it's got a build volume of 15 by 15 centimeters and two, uh, 200 millimeters or two, uh, 20 centimeters in height so this printer can really print larger prints while just having a small footprint. Now let's take a look at the Ender uh, when it's working. So first let's home the printer. As you can see the movements are pretty quick and uh, only the Z movement it's a little bit slower. And now let's give it the printing command. So I'm going to print from SD card and I tell it to print uh, my, well let's print the PLA spiral face. Now as you can see the Ender printer has a very small and very tiny display. But this display shows everything you want to know about the print. So it now tells you that the bed is heating and you can also see how quickly this is going. So uh, yeah, there is really a lot of power in this power supply unit because well, the bed is heating pretty quickly. Then after the bed is going to, uh, to the right temperature, so to 65 degrees Celsius, you will see that the extruder starts heating. Now, now you saw the change, uh, it says that the uh, extruder has now to heat up until it reaches 205 degrees Celsius. And also this one is going pretty fast. Now what you can do is change the settings here by going into tune and then you can set your speed changes or your nozzle temperature or your bed temperature, your fan speed, that kind of things, the flow rate. Uh, you can even say that you want to change filament and then it stops the print, uh, it passes the print, gives you the ability to unload and reload filament and then continue again. So really you can do a lot with this uh, firmware that's in the printer, it's just Marlin firmware. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's intuitive and even though the printer has a very small display, you can, yeah, you can use the printer very easy. So now it's reached the right temperature 
and now it's going to start the print. It homes the bed and then it does whatever the g-code tells it to do and in this case uh, I want to prime the nozzle first and after the nozzle is primed I want it to start and make a face. So at first it's going to lay down a bottom and then when the bottom is laid down then it will start printing in phase mode. Now I've been trying this printer up to 65 millimeters a second and I can say that it can print just fine on 65 millimeters a second. So at this moment there is not much that has changed on this printer. Uh, I'm printing with the standard extruder, uh, with the standard cooling fan duct, uh, so everything is pretty standard except for uh, the extruder wheel that I made and the two leveling wheels that I made. Uh, but the rest is pretty standard and as you can see, well, the printer is now going for some, some more speed. Uh, it's now printing on 65 millimeters a second and well, I can tell you it does a great job. So here at the back of the printer you can see its base and uh, you can also see the end level switch, uh, the heated bed connector and uh, the motor that is used for the uh, uh, y-axis and also if you take a look at how the bed is moving and uh, well how all the wheels are rolling it, it's really a nice printer in how it's made and it's very silent as well. Now what are my final thoughts about the Ender 2 machine? Well for its price, uh, the moment I bought it it was only $140, a little less, $137. Uh, I think it's a pretty good printer. It's very solid. You have to build it yourself, so you have to, to get all the pieces together. But the manual is very complete and uh, well, I have to say that the build was very easy. And uh, there is also on this channel a video where you can see a time lapse of me doing that build. Now, the quality of the printer right out of the box is very, very good. Uh, I was pleased by the quality, I have to say. And also the footprint of this printer, considering it's a small printer, it's, it's high, but it's small uh, on its footprint, is also very, very good. Um, what I dislike is the power supply unit. I have to say that uh, I would have liked it more if there was a power brick and not like the power supply unit that is supplied right now. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's a very decent, very nice machine uh, to have in your workshop, especially if you don't have that much space in your workshop to place a 3D printer. And well, with a build volume of 15 by 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters in height, well, I think that this is a pretty good uh, well deal if you buy a printer like this because it's, it's really really cheap now there are a lot of places on the internet where you can grab the ender to uh, this one is bought at GearBest and I have an affiliate link of GearBest in the description down below so if you're willing to help this channel out then please go to the link in the description down below and buy your own ender 2 machine and also there are lots of other places where you can buy the same machine and uh, well maybe for the same price maybe a little bit more expensive I don't know but take a look and, and compare them now thanks for watching this review if you're not subscribed this is a moment to do so then please go to the subscribe button and uh, if you see that bell yeah please also hit that bell button because otherwise you won't be notified every time I make a new video. And well, if you would like to donate to this channel, there are a few ways you can do so. Uh, you can uh, become a Patreon supporter or you can uh, do a one-time donation, buy me a cup of coffee and the links for that are also in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.